and welcome to the Codex Prime Podcast. We are on episode 85. It is Tuesday, August 15th, 2017. I am your host, Victor Omoyo, and with me as always is my co-host and social media chair, Carl Bird. What's going on, everybody? Hey, thank you for joining us on Facebook Live. Um, before we get started, we wanted to offer a moment of silence to the victims of uh, last weekend's uh, Charlottesville uh, terror terrorist attack. Uh, but at the hands of neo-Nazis and Klansmen, um, one victim uh, died. Uh, it was Heather Heyer. So we want to offer a mo- brief moment of silence, and our thoughts are and, pr- and well wishes and prayers are with uh, the victims at this time. All right, and uh, yes, once again, thank you for tuning in uh, today. We got a bunch of bunch of cool stuff to talk about as per usual we're going to be getting getting into some fan theories fan theories from some uh from some of um some movies television shows comics you know all nerd culture goodness and magic as per usual of course yeah what else would we talk about i know right well i mean we could talk about politics and you know taxes and well we ain't talking about goddamn (laughs) politics Yeah, but um, but yeah, I know this is a topic that I know you've wanted to touch on for like the better part of a year. Possibly, yeah. I'm just saying, like, there's just I just think they're great. Dis- I think it opens great dialogue. I mean, yeah, I mean, I have my my own misgivings or rather criticisms of fi- fan theories. Just fan yeah, th- shut down about it. That's why it took so long just to talk about it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that, I mean, just call it what it is. Oh, well, you don't. Well, here's the thing: you you don't have to lay that all on my feet. I mean, it's not. I'm not the sole reason why we haven't touched on fan theories. I mean, we've had you know more interesting topics to touch on. It just so happens that way. There were a couple of episodes we had no main dis- main discussion. Y'all just didn't want to do it. I mean, well, I mean, you know, y'all hate it strong. I mean, don't blame me. You can blame uh, our former co-host Arison Maurice for that. You part of that too. He's just trying to throw me under the bus for for stuff for no reason. I see you. That's what I do. Yeah, whatever, man. <laughs> but anyway, uh, with all that said, uh, Carl, what have you been up to this past week? Okay, of course, of course, you know nothing much as always. Uh, it's been pretty. I've been pretty low key for a while now. Um, I've been working on the uh, on the Codex mixtape. I'm hoping to get that done at least by Rhode Island Comic Con. So okay, just have that ready for you guys. Um, so this past Friday, it marked the uh, 44 years of hip hop. Mm. So um, Google went ahead and celebrated this. I probably I shouldn't have told you, I should have told you about this, but mm-hmm. I just didn't. So um, yeah. if you went onto Google's pa- Google's homepage this weekend, they had a special. They had the Google logo done up in hip hop graffiti art. Yep. And then you actually press play on it mm-hmm. on one of the O's. That was shaped as a uh, vinyl record. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, a short video featuring Fab Five Freddy. Mm-hmm. And he's discussing on August, ele- on August 11th, you know, the exact date. Yep. And it just started breaking down and talking about the history of hip hop, how hip hop began with Cool Herc. Uh, with Cool Herc doing the, um, doing the parties over on 1520 Cedric Avenue in the Bronx. Word. So, um,. Yeah, he was just telling. He was telling the story, and then how he would take the break, which was the instrumental part of the um, of a record, mm-hmm. and he would play the same record on two turntables. Yep. So the and that would extend it, so that would give the breakers a chance to dance. Hence the title. Hence the name break dancing. Mm-hmm. It would give the MCs a chance to you know start rapping over it, yep. and then next thing you know, hip hop was born. Oh, there it is. So then after the video. It kind of went into like this little like DJ. It's like a, I guess you want to. It's not an app, mm-hmm. but it was like a game where it would play like various um, breaks mm-hmm. of different records, and you was able to mix and scratch oh, wow. and stuff. So I mean, me being a DJ, I was having an effing ball. Mm, that's pretty dope. Oh yeah, it had like you know the big B by Billy Squire, Ashley's Roach clip, um, stay with me featuring, you know, stay with me by the Debar- which was, um, sampled by, uh, Biggie's one more chance. Mm-hmm. Um, between the sheets sampled by Biggie for big Papa. Yep. Um, more bounce to the Allen's by zap. Like, it, and it, it was just fun. I wish they still had it up. Cause I would have like demonstrated it. 
Mm. It would have been like a nice little code extra, and I would just demonstrate it. It was that fun. Wow, that's what's up, man. That's fresh. It was. Yeah. It was like I remember. Uh, shout out to Justin Case. He said, "Listen, if you put, if you played with this today, you had a good day." Wow, man. See, I wish I knew about that, man. Yeah, you can still catch the video. Somebody made. Somebody caught the video on YouTube. Oh, uh, shout outs to Wild Man Congo on. By the way. Hey, how's it going? Who man? says my t- my top five favorite rappers? Dylan, 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 and Dylan. Because I spit hot fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, actually, uh, Dave Chappelle actually met Dylan recently. Really? Yeah, he actually met him in person. I saw that on uh, on the interwebs. Yeah, he did like a brief like uh, video clip, you know, introducing him. You're gonna have to like send that to me. Yeah, I, I, I will. Uh, I'll pull it up somewhere. All right. So yeah, I got I got caught up doing that this weekend, and then also um, I got on I got onto a new app uh, which is called Grio. Mm, okay. okay, Grio app. It's a uh, video only social app to have, basically you can have real conversations about culture and um, current events. Mm. Um, it was created by three black black um, Stanford graduates: uh, Elizabeth Davis, Trey Kirkman, and Brandon Hill. Um, unfortunately, it's uh, iOS only as of right now. Sorry, right, Mr. Android user. Typical Android discrimination. Watch shit first. Go to iPhone. Man, iPhone can kiss my ass. Why'd you get one? And you'd be like, well, I retract my statement to iPhone. Listen, man. Yo, I Androids have bigger screens, much more user-friendly. And, you know... This is very user-friendly. And there are bigger iPhones. This is the 7. You can get the 7 and plus, the 7 Plus, and it's much bigger. Y'all ain't messing with the, with the, with the Android Samsung Galaxy S5. Y'all ain't messing with that. Or the S6 or the S7. You are oh, you're due for like eight upgrades by now. I'm good, man. I got the latest uh, IO. I got the latest uh, operating. Uh, uh, what? I mean, I mean that's. You I got was, the latest what? I got the latest upgrade. The latest software upgrade from okay, my I thing. Do too. My operating system upgrade. I mean. I do too. That's cool. I... Your screen is still smaller though. Who cares? How and how can a, how can a phone? Not have a back button on the on the uh, actual bezel, man. Come on now. Yeah, it's on the screen. Boom, it just went back. See, that's not as intuitive, though. Yeah, it is. Nah, yeah, it is. you're just close-minded again. I'm not close-minded. Listen, <laughs> Androids are the shit. In your ways. Whatever. See, man. even my, even even Congo says iOS, iOS, iOS. Nah, Android all day, son. Why do people who like rep cell phones like they're fucking gangs? <laughs> I, that's something I never understood. Even back in the day when people would just be like, yo, I got net. Well, if you had a Nextel, you was the shit. Oh, yeah. The chirp I thought chirps. I, man, my credit got approved and I thought I was balling. Oh, man. Back in the day, man. Like early 2000s. So that chirp, chirp, man. Oh, man. I thought I was the shit. Yeah. And then, you know, people be like, yo, I'm Nextel. I mean, I got T-Mobile, you know. So I'm like, I got Sprint. You know, Sprint brought out Nextel. But yeah. like. I don't know. It's just something I never understood. And now today is just iPhone, son. You know, I'm team Android. What up? Yeah, phone check, homie. <laughs> I, I hated know. Sidekicks back in the day. I never had one. Me, me too. Yeah, Sidekicks was a pretty had a pretty decent run. It did. Yeah. It did. I can't lie. But yeah. yeah. So um, I'm going to be getting on. So I got onto the uh, Grio app, by the way. That's what we was on. To. Yeah. And um, so I think, like, I'm just going to have discussions. Oh, what's the Grio app? Yeah. Huh? What's the Grio app? Uh, Let me just explain that to you. Oh, so, yeah. I mean. So, like, you can, like, post a question. Mm-hmm. It's, all, it's all video, so it's catfish free. Okay. And you can just say, hey, what do you guys think about this episode this week's episode of game of thrones mm-hmm. and people can join in in discussion and they actually and you can have like back and forth conversations with many people okay regarding that one regarding your one post okay hmm. so i got into i got into it it was from um a comedian a comedian a christian comedian named kevin on stage who's actually hilarious oh he is he, actually yeah really? yeah i know i know a few about, about his videos yeah Mr. Atheist likes Kevin on stage? I'm not an atheist. I'm agnostic. Same difference. No, it's not. I mean, well, okay, maybe it is. But, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, know, I know about his videos. Yeah. 
Yeah, so then he posted up uh, what was the what was the best nineties R and B song. Mm-hmm. I said "Poison" by Belle Devoe. Well, that's actually the eighties, though, isn't it? No. Was it nineteen ninety? Yeah. Wow, I keep thinking it was like the late eighties, like eighty eight, eighty nine. No. no. Okay. It was ninety. It was ninety, possibly ninety two. Nah, it was definitely ninety because I know it was on the guy's first album. Belle Biv DeVoe sung Poison, not Guy. No, what wasn't 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 Poison on Guy's album? No. No, I'm thinking about another one. Um, you're thinking I like. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> that and, was eighty. And Merry Go Round. Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. So I'm Puerto Rican. I, is that the same and way too many bomb RB songs in the nineties? Of course. Oh, yeah. I mean, the 90s was just an excellent time. I mean, Casey and JoJo, remember them? Jodeci. Jodeci, yeah. They're still Jodeci to me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's all. The, that's pretty much all I've been up to other than what's going to be uh, the main topic. Okay. The hell have you been up to? Uh, the hell have I been up to? Uh, just uh, just taking things easy, just uh, watching movies as per usual. Um, you know, doing doing a little bit of reading here and there, trying to catch up on my books. Um, uh, I saw a couple movies uh, this past weekend. Uh, one of one that I highly recommend for any of you comedy fans out there. It's Girls Trip. Chick flick. No, no. Actually, it, it, yes, it's a it's a chick flick, but but uh, Girls Trip is an awesome movie. I mean, if you're a fan of Bridesmaids, then you'll definitely like Girls okay, Trip. Okay, because I like Bri- Bridesmaids was hilarious. It, it was hilarious, and so. and, and Girls Trip is definitely. Is is in a similar vein. Uh, Girls uh, Girls Trip is a uh, uh, d- directed by uh, Malcolm D. Lee, who also directed the Best Man films, Best Man Best Man Holiday, and this film stars uh, Queen Latifah, Jada Pinkett Smith, uh, Tiffany Haddish, who is hilarious in this movie, and she, oh, she's she's on the come up. Oh yeah, oh absolutely, she is on the come up. Like I know she was she did an uh, episode of the Breakfast Club recently. Yeah, and she had a, like a real she had like a real like. Yeah. Deep backstory. I haven't had a chance to listen to it yet. Yeah, I, yeah. I watched that interview that she did on the Breakfast Club. It was it Vic's was on deep. the come up now. Like he's watching the Breakfast Club, hey. and he's the bash shot. Well, he still kind of does bash shot. I mean, even well, if he's starting to come around a little bit. I mean, towards I mean, I give. Hey, Breakfast Club has good interviews, man. You cannot dump on their quality of interviews, you know, and their guests. Did you watch the real side chicks of Charlotte? No. Uh, you may have to watch that word just for a laugh. I mean, I mean that, that's like there's just a bunch of reality TV skeezers. They're just contributing to the dumbing down of America, man. I don't, I, I don't need that in my spirit. Which is true, but the simple fact that Charlemagne and Little Duval roast them, and I mean, yeah, it, it was actually rather entertaining. All right, I'll take your word for it. But uh, it was more. It wasn't even. It was. It was. It, they don't even on the on the YouTube link. They don't even call it an interview. Mm-hmm. They call it a roast. Okay, well, um, I'll, 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 I'll take it under advisement uh, as to whether or not I'll watch it. But uh, if they roasted Ann Coulter, you'd be down to watch it. Hell yeah! Right. But, but anyway, uh, Girls Trip uh, also stars Regina Hall. Uh, okay. Oh, love her too. She's she's a underrated actress, and um, and she she plays a uh, a woman named uh, named Ryan, who's uh, who's whose husband is, is a guy named Stuart, played by Mike Coulter, Luke, Luke Cage. Oh yeah. Or Carl Lucas, and um, and apparently, and you know, uh, Regina Hall's character. She's a keynote speaker for the Essence uh, Music Festival, and uh, she she and three of her friends, uh, aforementioned friends, decide to get together and go down to New Orleans to have some have a fun filled weekend uh, filled with uh, you know good times and ratchetness all around. And uh, and the whole film is just is just hilarious from top to bottom. Like the the four the four main ladies have such excellent chemistry. Um, also, uh, Kate Walsh is in it. She plays um, uh, Regina Hall's uh, character's agent. Uh, Kate Walsh. She's also in Private Practice and Grey's Anatomy. Okay. Um, and she's like she she has she has some hilarious uh, zingers here and there too. Um, as I mentioned before, Tiffany Haddish is like the breakout star of this film because like man, every scene she just killed it. She was just straight up unbridled id id just straight raw like she just kept it she she didn't keep it 100 she kept it 200 like throughout all of her scenes like like there were scenes where she's like uh there was one scene where she was threatening to to like like she was threatening some dude uh which i won't i won't i don't want to give any spoilers but man some of the shit that she says and she gets away with man it's just like damn you don't want to be on her bad side 
or even mildly okay side. But well, I'll check it out on a date or something. Yeah, it, it's it's worth it. Like like it, like the writing the writing is good. Um, like plenty of uh plenty of like nice dialogue and zingers here and there. Um, the 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 pacing is also pretty good. Even though it's it's a two hour comedy, there's not a slow moment in it. And also, uh, Jada Pinkett is hilarious. She plays like a uh, a mother of single mom of two kids. So she's oh, more of so like she's like that mom yeah. type character. Yeah, she's like very matronly, and she dresses like a mom. And then she's like trying to mother her, the other the other uh, three in a group. Um, also, mm-hmm. Queen Latifah. She plays a gossip columnist who's trying to get a scoop on on uh, Virginia Hall's character. So that kind of breeds some conflict throughout the film. Uh, Yo, like, yeah, this, so this is kind of like the best man holiday because Tay Diggs tried to get a book, tried to get some stuff out of uh, Morris Chestnut yeah. oh, just so he can get a book out of him because his publisher wanted that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Kind of like that. Yeah. So kind of that element is kind of shared between those two films. But yeah, man, Girls Trip, I just had a blast, man. I was like laughing all the way throughout the film. I will definitely add it to my collection. Um, I Which reminds me, I should add Bridesmaids to my collection as well. I've been, you know, I've been forgetting to do that. Um, you can get it used cheap. No, oh yeah, I know. Um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a great it's a great comedy. Um, yes, it's a it could be a chick flick in the sense that it stars four four ladies, but it's a great oh, I film. Really said that. <laughs> but but it's it's a great comedy. Check it out. Girl's Trip is still in theaters. Watch it. Um, All right. Yeah. And uh, and uh, besides that, <laughs> I, I did hear good things about it. So I'm like, wow. Yeah, man. By all means, Victor approves. Yeah, I approve. Victor hates good shit. I don't hate good shit. Okay, man. sorry, not good shit. He hates fun shit. I don't hate fun shit. I mean, a girl trip is a fun film. I mean, he, he's starting to come around. The other guys, girls trip, mm-hmm. Breakfast Club interviews. I mean, listen, man. I mean, I'm not. I'm not all dour. You start. You start. You start um, rocking throwbacks, and it's a wrap. Throwbacks. Oh, come on. Is this 2004? Come on now. Hey, that's my favorite hit. That was my favorite fashion trend. Throwbacks. Really? Loved them. I mean, throwbacks were dumb expensive too back in the day, yeah, man. They yeah, they sure were. Yeah, but I uh, had no car, but yeah, I was wa- I was a fresh ass walk. I'll tell mm-hmm. you. That. I bet you were. But uh, but yeah. Besides that, I also saw another big f- jerseys too. Yeah, they were. Those jerseys was huge. They were mad oversized though. It was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. I had a Magic Johnson. I went past my knees. Wow, that's, that's like maternity maternity wear. It man. really was. It really was. This girl I was dating at the time, and she put it on, and Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, you certainly like them big. But the other film that I watched uh, was... <laughs> <laughs> but the other film that I watched uh, was was a film that came out earlier this year on Blu-ray and DVD. And it's, what the hell was this movie? <laughs> uh, Justice League Dark. Uh, Justice League Dark. Uh, it's a DC animated film. Okay, so it's good, and, and, and it, which means it's of good of good quality. And uh, the film it's a uh, it centers on uh, the the Dark Justice League, uh, which Batman has to has to uh, assemble because um, he's uh, he discovers a bunch of like ordinary people are hallucinating demons and they're actually murdering each other. So Batman he can't do anything about it. Neither can the rest of the Justice League. So he decides, okay, let me assemble people who. Will, People who specialize in the dark arts and the occult. So that's when he he gets the uh, assistance of John Constantine, uh, Zatanna, um, Deadman, otherwise known as Boston, uh, Etrigan, uh, John Blood, uh, and uh, Swamp Thing also makes an appearance as well. Remember that come out? Remember that show? I remember Swamp Thing. It was a cartoon and a TV show. Like the TV show was like on a yeah a couple months back, and I saw Mm -hmm. it on. I just saw it on TV and I just threw it on. I'm like, this shit is fucking horrible. <laughs> it certainly is. Like this was really whack, and yeah. I loved the shit out of it as a kid. Yeah, but but what's certainly not whack is Justice League Dark uh, because it's actually rated R, and um, it's it's it gets pretty dark and violent. You know, just just my type of my my my, my kind of speed. And of course uh, it is. Yeah, I'm a sick fuck. I'm not a sick fuck. You're but, a sick fuck. No, I'm not. Maybe a little bit, but anyway, yeah, but. Deal. But Live the, your truth, and nobody can use your truth against you. That's right, but uh, but uh, that was from Charlemagne's book, by the way. Another agreement there. Just read that book. Right, it's from Shakespeare, but uh, <laughs> but you know, it's 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 a really cool film. Um, plenty of uh, plenty of solid action. A very interesting story. Um, I liked uh, Constantine. His his character is like sort of like this um, very. Uh, 
this this very world weary, very sardonic type of person, and he has some kind of like you know uh, co- a complicated relationship with Zatanna, mm-hmm. um, who uh, who I thought was a really cool character. I like to see more of her in, in other DC DC type things because I think she's an interesting character. She's a magician who like basically says like words backwards, and those are her spells. So put it in the DCEU. Oh, yeah, I would love to see her in a DCEU, provided that you know that the rest of the DCEU can be as good as the DC animated films as well as the MCU. Um, but yeah, uh, just see Dark. It's a make one good movie. You think DC can just knock it out the park every time, huh, John? Upon it. I mean, oh, John is, is he is he on the? No, he's not on. <laughs> but I'm just calling you, John. Upon uh, it. Well, I mean, I mean, yeah, but I, I I will say that I would like to see Justice League Dark as a live action. Uh, something in, in 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 a live action form, uh, provided that is done with the right uh, director and cast, uh, because I, I think these characters are rich with potential. And um, bring and back Keanu Reeves, Zack Snyder direct it. No, you don't want Zack Snyder directing anything. It's um, dark. I mean, have somebody else like James Wan who can direct it, or maybe uh, uh, Robert Eggers who could direct it too. But um, okay, James Wan did Fast Five and Six, I believe, and then he also did The Conjuring. You know, I want to play I got a little cousin who loves The Conjuring. Those are great films. A little cousin? Yeah, he loved that movie when he was three years old. What? What kind of parent would let their kid, three-year-old kid, watch a horror film? Well, see, here's the here's the situation. I'm gonna, I'm gonna defend that situation. So, he's watching. They were watching it after he went to sleep, and he woke up, and he just wouldn't go back to sleep, and it was just on. And then that that one, he that one scene. Want to play hide and clap? Mm-hmm. He loves that. Scene. He loves that part. Okay. Well, I mean, the, I mean, the Conjuring is like PG thirteen, so it's not like he's watching like he, an R rated film. Yeah, like he cut. Yeah, like he get, he got scared of it eventually, but yet mm-hmm. he he apparently he loves scary movies, so it's like he'll he'll watch it once, get scared, but then he's gonna want to watch it over and over and over and over and over again. Oh, okay. Well, that, that's 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 I think that's that's cool. You know, I mean, when I was his, well, I mean, well, that's that's too young. I wasn't three when I watched RoboCop. I was five. I mean, that's a good age. Uh, but but yeah, like I said, Justice League Dark. Check that out. It's part of the DC animated uh, universe. Uh, <laughs> Kyle, shout outs to Kyle. Oh. He comes in and said the haters have arrived. Hate 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 hate. He's hate. he's certified. Yep, the player haters ball is in full effect. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but uh, but yeah. Besides that, um, like I said, oh, I'm still still playing Tekken Seven. Um, How you doing with that? Did you start? Did you start the uh, story mode? Yes, I did. I started the story mode. I'm. I think I'm halfway through it. Um, I've been playing mostly a uh, treasure mode. Um, yeah, I, those are fun. Nice little time killers. Yeah, and I've been trying to master a couple of characters. So far, I've gotten pretty good with Karina. No, no, Catalina. Is you it, would. Be, you would be good with the girls, huh? Hey, hey, the, the hey, the women in Tekken Seven are 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 badass. PS4, Xbox, PS4, bro. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, PS4 version. Uh, uh, Katarina, she's uh, she's definitely good for beginners. Um, I like her. I, I kind of got a good handle of her offense. Juggle. She's good at juggling her opponents too, which All I right. thought, which I got was just got a pretty good handle of as well. Um, I'm I'm kind of decent, a little with with Asuka. I'm trying to master her as well. Um, and Huarang, he's Paul Phoenix the goat. Uh, I mean, I'm okay with him. You can make a case with. Paul I'm okay with Paul. Mm. I'm more of a Kazuya guy. Mm. Kazuya, Warang, um, uh, Eddie, of course. Well, yeah. Those who know me. Yeah. Law. Uh, yeah, Law is also pretty good. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to master a couple of the other characters so I can, you know, kind of get a good handle for like a two player competition. Brian Fury? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I'm also, also trying to play a Steve Fox as well. I don't like, he doesn't kick. I know he's a, he's strictly, he's a he's just strictly boxer, but yeah. it's like ah, I need some more. I need more than that. Mm. Yeah, I got you. The sad part is sometimes you can be hard as fuck when you're fighting him. Yeah, that's true. I've 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 lost to him a few times as well. But yeah, that's what that's what I've been uh been mastering, trying to trying to master a little bit. I've been playing the Resident Evil Seven. Okay. Um, like I rage I I rage quit. What? Why'd you rage quit? No, I'm trying to freaking get the shotgun. I find the freaking shotgun. Uh huh. I take it off the pedestal, and then once, uh, well, yeah, off the pedestal, I go back. The door's locked. Oh, you you gotta find the the wooden shotgun so you can um re- re- replace that on the pedestal, so that way you can carry the real shotgun. So keep playing, 
Keep playing. You got to find the wooden. It's kind of hard when you only got three bullets and a freaking crazy man who won't die come at, constantly come after you. Oh yeah, you ain't getting away, motherfucker. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, but terrible game. You didn't, damn, he didn't like Resident Evil Seven. Listen, Resident yeah, Evil. I will say that game is scary as fuck. Though. It is. This shit is fucking terrifying. It is, and Jack Baker, man, he's pretty hilarious. Though he has some hilarious ass lines. Like it's met inappropriate. Like it, it, it but it makes it no, even when more he disturbing. Kills the freaking cop in the beginning, like with a fucking shovel. Yeah, that was fucking great. You would think it was great. I was sick. Fuck. Look, man. I mean, it was so shocking. You can't help but laugh at sometimes it's in that game. Not to me. It's more Silent Hill. N- nah, I I disagree. I never played Silent Hill, unfortunately. Um, Silent Hill, uh, Silent Hill Two is the best game in that whole series, and then Silent Hill Three is a close second. Would you have to play Silent Hill One just to get to? No, not to at all. Understand Two and Three. Not at all. Um, part three, part part three is kind of sort of like a continuation of part one with a different character. So it would it would help a little bit, but you don't really necessarily need to play part one to play part three. But part two is a standalone story, and oh, okay. that's like the best one. But yeah, man. Uh, but yeah, keep 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 at it with Resident Evil Seven, man. All right. Yeah, it's, it's a hell of a game. All right. Now you freaking tells me. <laughs> yeah, keep keep at it, man. Keep at it, and I'll keep at it with Tekken Seven. You enjoying it? You really enjoying it? I am. I am. Like, and 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 here's. I th- told you there's nothing wrong with fighting games. Well, th- like I said, like the thing is, like there's even though like each character has literally hundreds of button combinations to, to master. Like, I f- I find that if I if I can just master at least a half dozen or maybe even a dozen moves, or if that, then I think I'll be okay. You will be okay. All right. You do not need to memorize every button combination. All right. I mean, if you do, you're the fucking man. I mean, I will definitely get props to you and all that. Yeah. Drops. All right, Kyle. Take care, brother. All right, man. Work. All right, cool, man. Thanks for dropping in. But, but yeah, besides that, that's pretty much it on my end. Damn, that's it. All right, you want to get into the news and items of interest? Yes, yes, yeah, indeed. There's, uh, there's a couple of things you wanted to get into, so why don't you go ahead and lead the way? All right. Yeah. So um, one of the things that kind of piqued my interest uh, in recent weeks was uh, Jay Z's video "Moonlight" off his album 444. All right. And uh, this was a pretty interesting video. While it's not a straight m- uh, music video per se, it's actually like a short. It's like a like a short seven minute f- uh, film, okay. kind of like a riff of 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 the show Friends, but with an all black cast. So it features uh, the uh, many uh, young young black actors on the come up, like Tessa Thompson, Lakeith Stanfield, Little Ray How- Howery. Um, is that how you pronounce Issa. it? Issa Rae, yep, from Insecure. Yep, Team Lawrence. Um, oh, my God. Fucking right. You Boom. seen this week's episode? Yes, I have. One more time. Mm. Lawrence is a god. He is a god amongst men. I, I, I will say, though, I will say, before I get into the Moonlight videos, a quick aside. Yeah. Go ahead. He should have known better messing around with them two white girls, man. He, I thought, I thought like one was Asian. One was Asian. One of them was Asian. Are you serious? I am definitely positive. I thought they were both white. Nope. Nah. Uh, maybe maybe half. One Asian. of them. One of them was white, but the no, the other one was Asian. I don't know. I I I, I got to re-examine that. But anyway. Yeah, you will re-examine it. <laughs> man, whatever. But uh, but no, but Lawrence is the man. Okay, he drops his he drops his debit card mm-hmm. when he gets pulled over. Goes into the liquor store, buys like forty five dollars worth of liquor, mm-hmm. and then the girls pay for him. Then they end up, Then he ends up going back to their house and having a threesome. I mean, uh, well, but, he, but he, you can't. Lawrence is the fucking man. Well, I mean, Lawrence is going through his whole phase, right? Which is respectable, but. But at the same time, man, like I, I was kind of, I, I was kind of fearing for him because it, it, it kind of felt like happened to you. You would have did the same thing. Listen, I mean, it, they it, paid for you because he lost his guy. He he's thinking he lost his card, and they paid for him. He's like, yeah, I can get it. Just hold on, you know. You can just put this to the side. I can get. It. Nope, they took care of it. Invite him back to his house, and then next thing you know, like it was a little it bit. It was on, but it kind of felt like a get out situation because I I was kind of no, I was kind of getting really. I was I was a little scared for him because I was like, what if he's in an all, in an all white neighborhood, and what if they yell rape, and then all of a sudden his ass is in the clink? It happens. I'm just saying. So you thought way too much into that one. I don't know, man. Hey, hey. Them chicks started doing coke and everything after that. Well, that's even that makes it even worse though, because if you're on if you're if you're on coke and shit, like you you can spaz out. Ain't no telling what you can do. You seen Scarface, right? I did. Yeah, there you go. But, 
I mean, Lawrence is the man. I will say though, it's, it's it, it, I mean, the, 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 but the way those two white girls kind of shafted him. One white girl, happy. The other one was Asian. Right when the two girls shafted him, though, right? Yeah. It kind of it was a little bit of karmic justice because he did break Tasha's heart. He really did. Don't. I don't think Tasha deserved that. Okay, she did it, but. Still, Lawrence is the man. <laughs> That's all I can really say. Yeah, 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 yeah. You. No, no, no. If it's, listen, if you was in that same predicament, you would you would done the same thing. So Jay Z's Moonlight video was actually pretty interesting, and um, like I said, you had other other actors on there, like Hannibal Burris made an appearance. Yeah. Um, uh, Issa Rae. And wh- what was interesting about the video was that it was actually um, like it was, it was basically the whole conceit was like these 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 all black these black actors are riffing on a white all white show and okay. they're doing it in the exact same style as Friends. And then there was like one of the, I think the main the main actor I forget his name uh, Gerard he, Carmichael. Yep, thank you, Gerard Carmichael. He uh, after after the director yells cut, he takes a break. He he goes to goes up to Hannibal Buress and asks him, "Hey, what do you think about what we're doing so far?" And then Hannibal Buress just keeps it totally one hundred. It's like, yeah, honestly, this shit is whack. This shit is whack. It's it's trash, man. What is this like an all black version of Friends? But what's next? An all black Full House? It's like just like kind of just like running him down for like you know uh, doing it. But then like Gerard Carmichael's character was like, well, but but you know, yeah, yeah, I know it's an all black version of Friends, but we're just trying to be subversive. You know, we're trying to turn it on its ear. And then Hannibal Buress is like, nah, man. No, nah, I'm not feeling it. Not feeling it at all. And then at the end, uh, he kind of, you know, Issa Rae kind of leads him away from the set and he walks away and he kind of sits down in the middle of like the park in a moment of self-reflection. And I thought that what was interesting about the video was that like it kind of like it's like a commentary on like represent on black representation in media, especially nowadays, where where many black artists, especially Issa Rae, a, a prime example, where where we, thanks to social media and YouTube and all this, we're at it. We're at a position. We're at a at like a precipice creatively where we can where we as as black artists can create our own shows more than ever you know we don't have to strictly rely on like the the studio system or the sitcom system so we don't have to have like an all black version of friends or an all black version of some popular white show we can create our own stuff from the ground up and not have to you know be basically be our carbon copy like 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 they would in the 90s and also what was interesting too was that the reason why they chose Friends uh, for for this video, Moonlight, was because apparently um, Living Single, you know, that show was... Yeah, living Single. Yeah, I mean, that, that show, which was an awesome sitcom back in the day, still is. Um, apparently, um, uh, Warren Littlefield, who was an NBC producer, was asked when, when, when Living Single first came on the air, he was asked by... Warren Littlefield was asked by other producers from NBC. It's like, if you can take any show... And, and make it your own. What would you do? What would you? What show would you take? And Warren Littlefield said, "Living single. That's a show I would take." And Warren Littlefield uh, actually took that idea along and along with the other co-creators and created Friends. Two, like I think, a couple of years after Living Single debuted. So, really? Yeah. So Friends is essentially inspired by Living Single, and mind you, Living Single doesn't nearly get enough credit for that. And and I th- and I thought that was pretty striking because it's like. Because a lot of people, you know, love Friends as like as an all original sitcom, but an, an, an understated fact is that it was actually inspired in part by Living Single, like in terms of its concept, just an all white cast instead of an all black one. You know, 20- I never knew that, and I never thought about that. I we watched the we watched the video before before we aired, mm-hmm. and I'm just. I mean, I I wasn't really thinking too much of it. Like you was really adamant about watching it, about me watching it. So I'm like, yeah. all right, what's the you know what's the deal? I'm a, I was just entertained by it, so I didn't really think about. It. I did I, I did not know what to think of it. I was just, mm. I just thought it was entertaining. Yeah. Until you, I was like, you know what? You say what you have to say about it. Yeah. So yeah, it's an interesting video. So check it oh, out. And what about the end too, where they played the. Uh, Voiceover for the from the Oscars this year. Oh yeah, this year. When yeah. Blue Lights Victory got cheated. Yeah, like um, like uh, they at the end of the video they played uh, the audio clip of um, La La Land being mistakenly announced as the Best Picture winner this year. Right. And um, and that kind of it's a callback to Jay Z's song where in the chorus it says like we're stuck in La La Land even when we win we gon' lose, and that was a re- that was a direct reference to when even though Moonlight is the real Best Picture winner this year at the Oscars, the fact that La La Land got like the light. They got the grand. 
Yeah. Like the grand, yeah, you know, yeah, you know. Yeah, like, it's, the, like, that, they it, wa- it's like the big, the good surprise was wasted on La La Land. Yeah. I was watch, I watched Big Daddy the other day while I was at work uh, with Adam Sandler. Ew. That's but, a, it is a, it's a fun comedy. Damn. But, um, but yeah, like, you, like you're right. Like, it took the shine off uh, Moonlight's win. Right. It would, and 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 it, and, it, and they're both great films, but Moonlight's obviously the superior of the two. And have you seen Moonlight yet? I still have. You know, I forgot about Moonlight. Do you have Amazon Prime? No. Ah man. It's, well, I will say this though: for those of you who do have Amazon Prime, Moonlight is available to watch on Amazon for free, and it is available on Blu-ray and DVD. So please watch that film. It is a phenomenal movie. My favorite film of 2016, and deservedly the Best Picture Oscar winner. I thought it was the Neon Demon. No, it was Neon Damon was one of my favorites, but Moonlight was my number one. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, check that out. Um, also, uh, Game of Thrones, man. East Watch. What you th- what you think about that episode? I like that. I like the episode. I mean, there wasn't really any action, but it was still more like story of what mm-hmm. what the um, what the show needed. You kind of needed to like mm-hmm. chill out, especially after freaking last week's episode. Oh yeah, burn, baby, burn. Yeah. So. Um, it was actually still fire in this one. There was some killing. Yeah, yeah. but and also like the, like even though it didn't have a lot of action, it, there were a lot of pretty heavy like story revelations throughout and moments. Oh yeah, like the one that gave me chills was when Jon Snow, Snow touched the, the dragon, dragon, and then Daenerys is like, "What's going on?" So it's like the dragon knows, like, "Hey, what up, man? You were Targaryen too." Yeah, yep, yep. It smells that Targaryen blood. Yeah, man. So. Uh, I, I think I think we're getting yep. you're getting closer. And that revelation, I swear, that revelation is either gonna come. It's it's gonna ha- they're gonna realize it. And they're gonna say something like at the end of it, like right at the end, and mm-hmm. then we're gonna have to wait a whole another year from it. Yeah, maybe we'll we'll definitely find out in uh, in season eight, which is the final season. Um, also, uh, Gilly, if you remember that one part where uh, where Gilly and Sam they're in their little home, and Gilly's yeah, like Sam's reading through the. Yeah, at the Citadel, and she's reading through uh, one of his books, and she comes across um, uh, Rhaegar, Rhaegar, and um, I think what was it? Was it Lyanna? Star- no, it was Ned's sister. What was it? It was his sister's name. Ned's sister, Lyanna. Okay, yeah. So apparently, like, she came across uh, that whole thing. It's like, oh, like Rhaegar's marriage was annulled, and then he, instead he got married in secret too. And she was about to like say it, and then like. Then Sam had his nervous breakdown, so he so he cut her off. He didn't even hear what he, what she had to say. Oh yeah. So she was about to drop that bomb, like for Sam, like, "Yo, do you know that Rhaegar and and Lyanna had a kid, and it's pro- and it's Jon Snow." Yeah. Oh man. So, also, uh, also too, Cersei though she dropped the bombshell as well. Wait, refresh my memory on that one. She's prego, dude. She got a bun in the oven. She got an incestuous bun in the oven. Again. Yeah. With Jamie Lannister, yep. So and and and, ja- and and first of all, that that shit is fucking gross and repugnant. Two, Jamie and Jamie's rightfully says that yo, we cannot let anybody know because the public won't, the public won't like it. And, and Cersei's like, I'm the queen, I don't give a shit. Yo, she is feeling herself. Her and Daenerys, they are feeling themselves. Oh yeah, they they, they, they totally are, are feeling themselves, and even into and, and Tyrion can like see it. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah, how do you tell her to like? Chill the fuck out. Yeah. And so... He's like, eh, I don't know. I mean, I will say to that, um, if you remember um, in an earlier episode of Game of Thrones, like, I think it was like the third season when Cersei was a kid and she ran into the witch who who, get, who told her her prophecy, how yeah. she was going to have three kids and they're all going to die. And, um, and she would eventually become queen, but she will eventually meet her rune from a, from a rival queen or something like that. Apparently, maybe with this fourth kid in the oven, maybe I don't know where that's gonna lead, but Cersei's gonna die. So I mean, I hope so because she's a ma- massive c-word. But uh, <laughs> but but yeah, that that was interesting. Um, also, uh, uh, Jorah Mormont officially reunites with with Daenerys. Still trying to get out the friend zone, I see, huh? Hey, man. Uh, yeah, you can't. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think. As far as Gump can make it out, he could too. I don't. Th- I don't think it's a friend zone situation. I don't see it that way. I think that Jorah Mormont, yes, he does have feelings for Daenerys, but it's more so, more so, in a sense of like loyalty as as a, as a loyal knight to the cause. No, I see what you mean. I see what you're getting at. 
Yeah, even though he, even though there's a, there's a there's a touch of it like he is in love with her, but at the same time he knows his duty, he knows his place. He's not going to overstep that line, and Daenerys is not going to let him do it anyway. Right. And then at the end, you had the Suicide Squad, man. Why do you have to call them that? Why can't they be the Avengers? Uh, well, 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 because they're on a suicide mission. But let's call them the Avengers. Yeah, yeah. Suicide Avengers. You don't disrespect. Don't disrespect Game of Thrones like that. Well, 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 that's true. I mean, I mean, okay, all right. I mean, you're right because Suicide Squad is trash. So yeah, they are the suicidal Avengers, and uh, they're 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 on their quest to to get to get one of the uh, is it they, like get ahead of the of one of the White Walkers. Yeah, and bring it back to Cersei to prove that hey, these White Walkers these are real. Walkers exist. They, they are, these are real. Yeah. So all I can say is good luck with that. I really hope that uh, that um, that they all pull through. Oh, that episode's gonna be. Higher. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, and and also um, uh, Sir Davos, his um, oh, um, not not his son, but it was Robert Baratheon's bastard son that he was looking yeah. out for. Tell me, he does not look like Christian Bale. He oh shit yo Kinda, yeah because as soon as, as soon as he turned around like and in, in when he when he met him when Davos met him in the in the in the smithing area, he turned around. I'm like, oh, is that Christian Bale? Did they really cast him? And I'm, then I had to look at him. I'm like, yo, is he short? Yeah, he he's short, but I'm like, damn, man, yo, if 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 they if they if they try to like do another like Batman Batman film like with Christopher Nolan's continuity, they could really cast him in that role again as like a younger Bruce Wayne. Oh yeah, yeah, because he look they look so much alike. But yeah, man, he's a beast with that hammer, though. Yo, but why didn't freaking Davos get his money back though from his dudes? I'm like. That's, he just killed him. I'm like, yo, run them pockets and get your money back. And he, probably, he probably was like, yo, we ain't got time. If these two guards found us, man, yo, we got to be out. Maybe, or maybe he got him off screen. I don't know. But, um, but yo, he, yo your, your, your boy can wield that hammer like no one's business, though. That's what she said. I don't get the joke. But anyway, <laughs> but yeah, East March, man, we got that. That's, it's, 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 a heavyweight, it's a heavyweight hammer of an episode. And we're, we've got two more. Two more episodes coming down Damn, the pike this season. It, yo, this not, but I'm cool with it because it's ending, and then next week football season, the following week football season is back. Oh Jesus! Yes. Yeah, football season. Yeah, I mean, yeah, with your oh, oh, let's let's oh, let's let's, let's, let's football's back, man. Hey, let's celebrate CTE, bruh. Of course. <laughs> what pro wrestlers get CTE? It's different, but anyway, um, so they still get it. Nah, 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 not, not 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 as bad as the NFL. It's there. Let's 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 look up, let's, <laughs> let's let's do some research. Look up some some statistics. All right. Football outclasses uh, wrestling in terms of CTE related injuries. Possibly. Yeah. But yeah, that's 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 what I got uh, for for two very interesting highlights this past week. Yeah. So all right. So what's next? Let me see. Shonda Rhimes is moving to Netflix. Yes. All right. Netflix has signed a multi-year deal with Rhimes Production Company, Shondaland, which which will produce and produce new and original content for the streaming service. Rhimes will be paid ten million per year. Scandal, How to Get Away with Murder, and Grey's Anatomy have been available on Netflix and will also continue to air new seasons on NBC. Is the scandal coming to an end though? Um. I, I I'm not sure. I haven't I haven't watched the show. Is it? Yeah. Um, friend of the show, show Jen. Oh God, I can't talk. Friend of the, friend friend of <laughs> the friend show. Friend of the show Jen says yes. Yes, um, she's currently playing Miss Pac Man, trying to break her high score. Um, yes, uh, I think this is a pretty. But she won't do it. Nah. Well. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is pretty interesting. Shonda Rhimes um, signing a deal with Netflix. I mean, because I know three of her shows they're they're ABC, not NBC, yeah. but close enough. Did I say? Yeah, you said NBC. <laughs> but yeah, Sunday Night Football is on NBC. So. Oh, okay, there you go. But then Agents of Shield is on ABC, which I still gotta finish and catch up. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Speaking of which, well, I have something to mention with, with the ABC uh, Cinematic Universe at, for Marvel. Anyway, um, I think it's interesting that that uh, Shonda Rhimes has signed a deal with Netflix because not only are three of her most popular shows are on Netflix, um, I'm still trying to get through How to Get, get Away with Murder, um, but also it shows that Netflix is actually becoming a ma- even bigger player. Like they're starting to get these high profile acquisitions. Yeah, because got- everybody sees the success in it. Like look at all the Marvel series. Look at like all the movies that had came out and stuff. And mm-hmm. a lot. Like it's Dave Chappelle. Yep, Dave. Like Chappelle. come on. Yep, and they also got Mark Miller for Miller World. Yeah, that's right. Yep, 
And they got Shonda Rhimes for Shondaland. Yo, so I think this is a definitely a, a, a revolution for some content creators or, or showrunners, rather. Because streaming is streaming is it's it's the future. That's where it's going. Yeah, I, I mean, I still enjoy I still enjoy waiting week week by week mm-hmm. for shows because it, it the conversation's longer. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, like we can talk about we can bang out. Um, okay, like we can bang out one of the Marvel series. Mm-hmm. And like one episode, yeah. When, when which Game of Thrones, you get week by week. That's a whole conversation within itself. Mm-hmm. Each episode. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, like I think that like you know people say that oh they're all about cutting the cord, and I'm and I'm for that to a degree. But to I a think degree, that, yeah. Yeah, but I think that like like traditional TV will always be there. I mean, that's why you know, for example, Empire, you know, is a week to week show. Yeah. And season four is coming out this fall. You know, my my TV wife Taraji P Henson, Cookie. You know, I can't wait to, you know, see her again because she's bae. Um, you know, You're grown. Stop saying bae. Listen, man. Listen. I mean, it is what it is. She's bae. Carry on. But anyway. <laughs> but yeah, um, interesting deal. Well, um, interesting, interesting, interesting to see what where Netflix will go next as far as like acquiring content creators. And on, and on that note. I'll, I'll pick up the next headline. Uh, Amazon has also signed a, a deal with Robert Kirkman. Uh, Robert Kirkman is the uh, co-creator of the Walking Dead comic series. Uh, he signed a two-year deal with Amazon to develop exclusive new TV projects for Amazon's Amazon Prime streaming service. And uh, Kirkman and his Skybound Entertainment production company will also be leaving AMC, which is also the home of the Walking Dead show. So maybe that means Walking Dead may actually come to an end. Maybe, maybe either that or it would maybe continue on uh, uh, on on Amazon. But I really it's gonna well oh, on Amazon. Yeah, as long as like Robert Kirkman's involved, like he, mm. yeah, don't Robert Kirkman, please do not pull Adam Aaron Magruder. Oh yeah, Aaron Magruder. He was on. He the did Boondocks. the Boondocks. Yeah, for Cartoon Network, right? Yeah, and he left at the he left in the fourth season, right? Yeah, before he did three seasons and then yeah. the fourth season, which was. God awful. It was? It was uh, there was literally one joke that I laughed at all throughout the whole season. Wow, I didn't know it was that bad. One joke. And they still had the original like cast and all that. But oh, man. one joke man. throughout the entire season that I thought was funny. Wow. Damn, I didn't know it was that bad for the fourth it season. It sucked. Yeah. But uh but yeah, Robert Kirkman signing to Amazon, man. Another uh, streaming acquisition, high-profile one. So, what do you think? What do you think, man? I mean, I'm just, re- I'm just, I'm not sure what the future would hold for The Walking Dead. Mm. I really hope that show comes to an end, though. I really want it to end because I think it's dragging. I think like how it's how a, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I agree, Jen. Like the last season was trash. No, it, it's been doing the same formula. Mm. Great season premiere, mm-hmm. drags. Yep. Then the mid season finale, great. Mm-hmm. Then the mid season premiere, mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. Drags, great season finale. Yeah. So that's they- literally been their formula for like the past like three, four seasons. Yeah, that's true, and like that means like out of like what typically thirteen, sixteen episodes a season. Like you have four episode, four good episodes worth tuning into, yeah. Yeah, because like last season, man, I couldn't really stand it. Like it was a lot of filler. I just, I just eventually quit, quit watching the seventh season. I haven't, I haven't even watched the finale. Oh, watch the the finale was good. Okay, I'll, I'll get as part of their formula. Yeah, yeah. So I'll have to get into that. Um, hey, I mean, hopefully, uh, hopefully, um, Robert Kirkman will produce some more original content. You know, yeah, I'd like to see what else he has up his sleeve. Yeah. Uh, uh, so Studio Ghibli, I hope I said that right. Yes. Okay, right, cool. Studio Ghibli reopens for production of Hayao Miyazaki's new movie. No details of Miyazaki's next film have been released, but Studio Ghibli producer Toshio Suzuki said the film will be released sometime in 2019 before Tokyo hosts the 2020 Olympic Games. Production of the film begins this fall. Miyazaki's last feature before he announced his retirement was a 2013 film, The Wind Rises. Yeah, so you're familiar with uh, Miyazaki's films, yeah? No, really. I, I'm not. I know he's a legend. I just never got around to like watch any of his films. Shame on me, of course. Really? Like you haven't seen Princess Mononoke? I have not. Oh man, that is 
that's a phenomenal anime. Is it in your is it in your collection? Now? Yes. Is it? Yeah. Princess Mononoke, Spirited Away. Those are like two of his like masterpieces right there. Um I haven't seen I still haven't seen my neighbor Totoro, mm-hmm. which is like one of his most well known ones. Um he's he's made a whole bunch. Oh yeah. Like yeah. I already know the dude's a legend. So. Yeah, so I'm I glad I just never got around to I just never got around to seeing any of his work. Yeah. So you... Shame on me. Yeah. I own it. Yeah, you you really should. I think some. I, you think some? I think some of them would be on Crunchyroll though. Yeah, they they should be. I All mean, right, I'll take yeah. a look. Um. So yeah, I mean Miyazaki coming back out of retirement to give us bless us with one more film. I'm all for it, man. Sure. All for it. And then the last headline here: uh, the Witch director and star are reteaming for a Nosferatu remake. Uh, Robert Eggers, who directed the uh, last year's film The Witch, is directing his second feature film with uh, with his uh, star a- a- Anya Taylor Joy, and this will be a remake of the nineteen nineteen twenty two horror classic Nosferatu, uh, which stars Max Schreck as Count Orlock. Um, I, Robert Eggers, I mean, I, I don't know if you if you've seen The Witch. Nah. Oh man, it's it's a great horror film. It's so creepy. I reviewed it on the show when we had Justin Case last year. Did you? Yeah. Is that, that the one when he said that he was falling asleep on it? Yeah, like he was sleeping on it. Yeah. Um, but which I, if you're a fan of horror films, I really recommend watching The Witch uh, because it's it's creepy as shit. It's disturbing. I watched it twice, and I was even more scared the second time around, and I loved it. There you go. Yeah. Disturbing, creepy, Victor. Yeah. And hey, that's the that's the equation. Yeah, so I want to see what he can come up with with uh, his Nosferatu remake because that would be interesting. I mean, I mean Dracula, oof, vampires can't get with that. So you like Twilight? No, Twilight is trash. You said you like vampires. Twilight, that's that's not real vampires. When we're talking about real vampires. I'm talking about Blade. We're talking about Vampire Hunter D. We're talking about Dracula. Blade Trinity. No, that's not real to me. You mentioned Blade. Blade Trinity is not real to me, therefore it doesn't exist. Yeah, Blade was so good. My mother liked Blade. Oh, wow. Okay, there you go. Speaking of which, I do want to shout out my grandmother. She's in the hospital, and she I went to go visit her, mm-hmm. and she told me that she watches. <laughs> so with all the cussing that I do, and I realized, like, oh, my God, my grandmother's a pastor, too, and she watches me. <laughs> oh, on the podcast? Yeah. Oh, man. Um. Wow. Did she watch last week's episode? No. No. Nah, she said she hasn't watched in a while. She, <laughs> she says she does catch it. So I'm like, Mark, I'm like, Grandma, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm cussing. But Grandma's cool. She's cool about it. That's cool. I mean, hey, you know, it's a it's a podcast. You know, we we try to keep it, you know, free, free with the language. You know, we're we're unshackled here. You know. Yeah, but I had a. Re- it was a really good laugh. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I will say uh, also uh, I, I mentioned that we're going to talk. I, was, I wanted to mention something about Marvel and, t- and the TV shows earlier. Oh yeah, go ahead. I start. I started watching Iron Fist. Three episodes. Three episodes into Iron Fist, and you said I was you done. Quit. I was done. I that show is fucking whack, dude. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! I I, I don't. I, I mean, hey, bless you for for sticking through it. But man, I just I just went online. I looked up a, sp- a a comprehensive spoiler article which detailed every breakdown of all the twists and whatnot. That that's all I needed. That's all I needed because I was trying to watch Iron Fist in time for the Defenders this Friday. Correct. Oh, but I'm yeah. like, oh yeah, you see, have you gone on Netflix uh, and noticed that they have a countdown for the Defenders? Oh really? Yeah. Oh, As man. a matter of fact, shouts to um, this girl Noelle that I met. She um, she's gonna be tuning in soon. But yeah, I, mm-hmm. we talk, I wore a Luke Cage T-shirt. Mm-hmm. And she was just freaking lost her mind. Told her about the podcast, and she was just so amped about it. So, mm-hmm. shout out, big shout outs to her. And we like we're holding up, com- we're holding up lines at Cumberland Farms, just talking about it. So. Oh wow, that's what's up. But yeah, man, Iron Fist, trash, trash can. I, I know, I know, it's not good. I know it's not good. Yeah. I enjoyed it. You know, I hung around for it. Mm-hmm. You know, I was entertained by it, but I, I, I know the, I, I see the flaws. Yeah, the flaws, the flaws, absolutely. So yeah, that was that was my thing, um, right there. So yeah, yeah. Let's uh, we got we got another uh topic, our main event here, talking about fan theories. Fan theories. So uh, why don't you uh take us on this journey, Carl? This long awaited journey. Um yeah, it's just uh, I don't even know where to start. I got like three really good ones. And then mm-hmm. I came across one that was just freaking ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, 
You know, I'll start. With, I'll start with one. I'll start with my first one. Mm-hmm. Um, the Montreal screw job. That's really. I, there's a fan theory for the Montreal screw job. Yes. Let's hear this. That the whole entire thing is a work. Hmm. All right. All right. So let's think, let's think back. At that time, you know, at the time, Bret Hart was leaving, leaving mm-hmm. WWE to go to WCW. WCW was kicking WWE's ass in the ratings. Yep. They were starting to turn around, but they still would, didn't really get that momentum just yet. Mm-hmm. So with Bret leaving, let's stage something to where I make myself look, you know, I do something bad to you and all that. There's this big blow up and everything. Mm-hmm. Everybody was all in on it. Yep. So let's use Brett. So Brett, we're gonna use you. This is I'm I'm Vince McMahon talking. Mm-hmm. We're gonna use you to go into WCW, get some intel, mm-hmm. tell them, and let us know how bad things are going, so we can move in like how I did in the '80s in the territories and start taking talent. Because if you noticed, people started leaving. Once the, uh, once the Austin era began and Brett went to WCW and then WCW mm-hmm. was just turned into a complete shit show. Mm-hmm. And just like, you notice that people were just leaving little by little. Mm-hmm. Big Show was already like set to leave, but he still had to, um, he had to fulfill his contract. Yeah. But yeah. Everybody started leaving, and then the radicals came along, and mm-hmm. all that, which ultimately led to WCW's demise. Mm-hmm. So, but they had they kept that on the low. Bret Hart has kept that. They, they he's old school. Mm-hmm. He believes in kayfabe. I mean, and he has gone to an extreme with kayfabe before, when him and Owen went to you know they had the stage like there was problems in the family between them two, like mm-hmm. they couldn't even be seen together. Hmm. So, so Brett has remained professional. This whole thing, they all be, remain professional. So, okay, so do you believe personally that it's a work? It would not surprise me. It, it, could, it could be. No, it could be. I, I'd have to disagree strongly that Go it ahead. was a work. Um, I think the Montreal... Yeah. Uh, the Montreal School job was absolutely real um, because you gotta you got you have to look at the fact that Bret Hart was extremely bitter when he departed WC when WWF in in November '97. He even spat in Vince McMahon's face. It even could all have been the word. Even punched him backstage. You know what? Vince McMahon has always been so dedicated. Where when he has whenever he had matches with people in the ring, he said, "Listen, if you end up clocking me or some, mm-hmm. if you have to beat the shit out of me for this business." Go ahead. Hey, I mean I'm, that crazy old man has bled for this company, for that company, literally. Oh yeah, he certainly has. He certainly has. He's given. He will do it again in his old age. Yeah, unfortunately, but um, but with the Montreal screw job, it's definitely not. A, it's definitely all real because a Bret Hart, you know, he oh he read and wrote in his book, kayfabe, dog. It, no, the, the screw job was not was 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 real. You, well, you you read Bret Hart's book, right? His yes. Name? I went. To, I drove to New York just to get a yeah. copy, an advanced copy. He didn't and meet him. He didn't say the Montreal screw job was kayfabe. No, he never did. But yeah. that's what I'm saying, though. Mm-hmm. He can't say that it's kayfabe. Yeah, but it's not. But except that it isn't kayfabe. It's actually legit because, no, like, I'm sure it was legit. But just think about it. Just think about it with an open mind. Like, what if it really was? That it, it's just that they all had to maintain the secret well, that it was a work. Well, if it was kayfabe, then Bre- M- mind you, look at Bret Hart's career in WCW, like how mismanaged he was. He was probably still get- he still got paid though. He still got paid, but he, he was paid. he was probably still getting paid he- by WC by WWE on the low. Nah, like he was he was underutilized. I'm not saying that it definitely was, mm-hmm. but it's just that the fan theory itself it could op- it opens up a possibility where it could have been staged. Nah, nah, nah they I'm- just went. Mind you, well, full blown with it. Well, because of the screw job, Owen Hart tried to get out of his contract, and Vince wouldn't let him, so yeah. he had to stick around. Maybe Owen was in on it. God rest his soul. No, he wasn't. No, and then no. I mean, the, the the screw job was absolutely. And, and mind you, like it took Bret Hart, um, like twelve years, twelve years to get to come back on WWE programming on Raw. 
Yeah, to go back on Raw. He did. He came back to the, for the Hall of Fame sooner with that because he said when I went to go meet him, he said, "Listen, he, he always said that if I if they ever he said that night at Montreal, if I if they ever asked me to come back to do the Hall of Fame, I would do it." Mm-hmm. Yeah, and been that bitter. I mean, he well, was bitter enough. Don't get me wrong. He was bitter like a mu- absolutely. And plus, like the fact that he acci- he had to retire because of the accidental kick by Goldberg. Yeah, you know, he suffered a stroke and all this. Like. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that there's there's too much reality, especially what happened afterward. A, to, oh yeah, there was a lot of reality, but uh, just the theory itself, I was like, wow, it and, could, and, and it could be possible on some no. WWE Illuminati shit. No, no, and, 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 and mind you, Vince McMahon's biggest concern was that he didn't want Bret Hart to pull a Medusa, uh, where it's taking the taking the taking belt, the belt and, and throwing throw it in, in the trash. Yeah, yeah on w, WCW programming, so he took a chance and you know on the fly. No, I asked, completely understand. I completely yeah. understand that. I honestly do believe it's real. It's just that the theory was like, wow, that's a pretty bad. That's. Mm, uh, um, nah, it's 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 too too much reality for it to be kayfabe, man. Too too much. Right, too much I'm just animus. Saying. With all these, with all the conspiracies that do go on in the world, you just never know. Eh, yeah, I, f- I find that most conspiracy theories, like fan theories, are just um, really. It's not. It, it, it's it's all it's all conjecture, really. It's all it's all it's all about making connections that aren't there. But there's a, but it brings a dialogue, right? Like what we're doing. Yeah, but but okay. Like before I get in, before I get into my fan theory, like. Like one of the reasons why we've been, we've been, I've I've been personally putting off the whole fan theory mm-hmm. topic for so long was because I'm not a fan of fan theories at all. Right, you you guys all explain that. Yeah, and and uh, I'll explain it to our viewers and listeners. The reason why I'm not a fan of of fan theories is because it's not about analyzing the work as it is. It's it's, a, it's about coming up. It's all about a weird fan fiction where you don't accept the work as is you want to include incorporate your own half-baked ideas into the finished product which is understandable but sometimes it's... and and it's about it's about um trying to make connections that simply aren't there like cor- like uh, it, it's, it's heavily reliant on fallacies like correlation doesn't always equal causation but you know fan theories seem to ignore that and also like fan theories, it's it, a lot of it to me. It's about fans trying to prove that they're smarter and more creative than the actual creators, and I think that's a little bit insulting. Hmm. I wouldn't say it like that. It's just they just people like to just think take like to uh, yeah come up with their own takes on certain things. Yeah. So it gives so it gives the fans some type of creativity. Well, I mean, there there's. You, you can come up with your own interpretation of a certain yeah, of exactly. certain work, right. but it has to be based on the valid evidence presented in the work itself. You can't just come up with stuff out of whole cloth. Like one of one, like one of the fan, one of the fan right. theories that <clears throat> I know some because I know you came across a lot of like ridiculous ones. Yeah, like one of the more ridiculous ones that I came across, which which on the surface sounds like it's plausible, but really I think it's it's a little too convoluted. It's basically um, Jurassic World. Uh, Man, where, damn it, I can't even join in on a combo with that one. Well, right. well, Jurassic World, it's number one, it's boring as shit, so don't watch it. Um, and, Didn't Maurice like it? Yeah, Maurice liked it, yeah. Which, good good on him. You know, I can see why people liked it, but for me, I, I fell asleep in the middle of it. Like, I had to, I had to pause the Blu-ray and, fill, uh, and take a 10-minute cat nap so I can get through the rest of it. But but in Jurassic World, you have, um, you have uh, uh, Chris Pratt's main character, Owen Grady. And uh, the, the the a big fan theory theory that's been floating around is that is that Chris Pratt's character Owen Grady in Jurassic World is the little kid from the beginning of Jurassic Park, the the kid that uh that Alan that uh, Alan Grant scared with the raptor claw, yeah. saying that oh well you know raptors can disembowel you this and that and that little kid who was scared out of his wits grew up oh, to be Chris Pratt's character. Yeah, I came across that one. Yeah, and apparently like uh w- one of the reasons why this fan theory is it was what got got some traction among fans was that uh you know Alan Grant was explaining to the kid in, in Jurassic Park that you know it's all about you know show show some respect you know show some respect to these um these creatures you know and and the, and the history and all this and and in Jurassic World Owen Grady's relationship with the raptors as he says is based on respect you know like he he approaches the raptors you know at their level he and he he you know, treats them treats them right treats them fairly humanely mm-hmm. and he gets their respect and you know 
you know, he, they, fight, they fight alongside him. Do you think the writers actually, like, left that little piece open just for that? It's, po- there- it's possible. It's possible that they might want to pay, like, a very subtle homage to the first yeah. film by, by, by introducing that. Um, I, th- I, th- I, think it's, I think it's a little bit silly. In- Wasn't the kid, like, chubby? Yeah, he was chubby, but yeah, but then again, like that. Chris also, Pratt was chubby. Yeah, he, on Parks and Rec, and then he got swole, got Diesel for Gar- Guardians. Yeah, um, but I think I think that uh, like on the surface, it do, it does it, it it is plausible, but I think that it's a uh, it's a ridiculous theory in a sense that it it tries to satis- satisfy this really unnecessary need to connect everything in fiction, like not every. Not every uh, story in like a, in a certain universe has to be interconnected on, on all levels. Like things can be stand, can stand on their own. They can, but I mean, but at the same time, they can connect, but then they can um, stand alone. Like, but is it do, like is it documented within the movie that this picks up from like what twenty years later from Jurassic Park? Yeah, yeah, yeah they do connect in. I mean, but as far as um, Chris Pratt being the kid from the first movie, um, I like I said, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't never got a chance to watch the movie, unfortunately. Mm. Um, it's um, I did want to, I did want to see it, just didn't go see it. Yeah, I mean, you, I mean, I'd say you're not missing anything. I mean, you'd, you'd probably enjoy it. Um, yeah, because I'm a mouth breeding. Oh, I was over rubbing I, popcorn munching. I wasn't gonna say all. I need to write that down. I wasn't gonna say you were. Gonna, you, you, I wasn't gonna say you're a popcorn munching mouth breather. I mean, why not? You said it before. I mean, I'm saying that you might enjoy this movie because you know you you tend to be more uh uh I I dare say lenient towards uh films that are of a lesser nature. In other words, I like to watch movies that to. To have fun, you like you you like watching bad sh- you like watching bad movies, but um, but so that's why I say Jurassic World might be up your alley, but you know, hey, hey you you might you might you might get some more enjoyment than I have, you know, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, I like to have fun. I do too. You're getting there. I mean, I, I've I <laughs> man, I've always I've there. always been there. You're getting there. I've always been there, dude. And you know what? Uh. You enjoyed the other guys, so you're getting there. Yeah, I did. I did. I love the other guys. I still, I still love them. <laughs> <laughs> Soup kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. What, 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 are, what are some other fan theories okay. you got, man? <laughs> All right, this one is a. Uh, this was off of uh, Reddit, I believe, mm-hmm. and um, it's a Game of Thrones fan theory. Okay. That Bran that Bran Stark is the reason why the Mad King. Went mad. Hmm. Okay. Let's let's hear this. Okay. So Brand. So Brand, who is a three-eyed raven, mm-hmm. he's unable. He's he's um able to interact with the past. Yeah. So as we've seen in um that episode where he goes back to the past and he sees a young um, Hodor. A young Ned Stark. Yep. And you know he just said, I forgot what he whispered to him, what he said to him, and Ned actually heard him. Yeah. Oh, he said, "Father." Yeah. Yeah. And then not to mention um Hodor. Mm-hmm. Completely just screwed that screwed Hodor up. Yeah, he did. Hodor I was just side for, Hodor was a side character. Mm-hmm. And we felt for his death. Oh yeah. We yeah. more we as Game of Thrones fans mourned for his death. Yeah. I, I I had a lump in my throat, man, when I when I saw that when I saw him give his life. Like somebody asked me, they said, You watch Game of Thrones? I was like, Hodor, and it just <gasps> Hold the door, hold the door, hold the door. What's crazy about that door. moment? I know we're getting off track, but what's crazy about that moment? It's like now it's just a repeated cycle. Mm. A repeated cycle. It's like he lit, like he's just he's visual in his death. Yeah, lives through it, dies mm. again, and it's just like he visuals his death and he lives through it, dies again. It kind of like just mm. yeah happens over and over again. Yeah, it's Poor like fucking guy, man. man. Wow, that's deep. All right, but anyway, <laughs> um, so when Arius, Ty- Arius Targaryen is, um, when he kills Rickard, and, well, you know who Arius, Arius Targaryen is, right? Is it, is it Arius Targaryen? Yeah. Or is it, who, who which, which Targaryen that's, was um, he? He was the Mad King. Okay, yep. So when he's the one who he kills Rickard and Brandon Stark, which was Ned's brothers. Yeah. But when he was killing them, 
he would repeatedly say, burn them all. Mm -hmm. So Bran actually goes back in time. He goes back in times to warn Aris about the white, about the white walkers. Mm -hmm. So when Bran written, when Bran's whispers, he would actually heighten Aris's already like crazy batshit paranoia. Mm -hmm. So then he would, he would sit and like constantly just say, "Burn them all! Burn them all! Burn them all! Burn them all! Burn them all!" Which caught in that also, his his which also heightens his paranoia, and that it causes the War of the Seven Kingdoms that mm -hmm. we're still in right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then evidence of this fan theory goes back to these back to the first book, where Bran's care caretaker would sometimes speak to Bran as if he's one of his ancestors. And the line, and then the line from the book says, "She had lived so long. Enough, she had lived so long. Mother had told told him once that all the Brandon Starks had become one person in her head." Wow. Hmm. Okay. So, and there's slightly evidence of that when in this past episode where Bran actually commands the Ravens, mm -hmm. and they go see the um. They see the what the army of the dead and the White Walkers walk forward. Yeah, and then he's like sending off warnings. Mm. Okay, so maybe this could lead to him in future episodes going back. Now that we know that Bran is capable of doing such a thing, mm -hmm. going back, and they're gonna show show him, you know, giving warnings to Aris and showing Aris mm -hmm. becoming. Becoming basically becoming a mad king. Wow. Okay. So, he, so that's that's actually a very tantalizing theory. Like Bran Stark being the one who drove the Mad King insane. Yeah. Wow. So it's kind of like. And then there's that repeated cycle that I was trying to talk. You know that I mentioned earlier with yeah. Odor. It's going to be the same thing with the Mad King. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's like Bran, like whether intentionally or otherwise, unintentionally, like he's the one who's causing all these massive ripples. Yeah. Uh, in the past, wow, that's man, that that actually that would actually make that actually makes his story and like in a Stark story even even sadder than it already is. Yeah. Yeah, man. Wow. So. They might hit you in the fields, didn't I? Yeah, no, it's, it's giving me that. That's actually a, a legit fan theory. I, I, I can get behind that. Like I said, some fan theories are legit, and other ones are ridiculous. Yeah, absolutely. Like I'm sure, pretty sure the one that you got coming up is ridiculous. Um, this one is it's a uh, it, it's it's a bit ridiculous, but it also it also at the same time sounds a little intriguing. Good. Um, I, I I pulled this out from uh, Entertainment Weekly. All right. Among their list of uh, ridiculous fan theories, and uh, it's a uh, it's on it's about the Simpsons. And, really? Yeah. <laughs> And it says that um, this fan theory claims that the Simpsons are actually a family of geniuses, all of them. What the fuck? So I'm actually I'm actually gonna read this. Uh, this is an excerpt from uh, Entertainment Weekly, which is also which they also got the original the theory from Reddit. And um, it says uh, the theory puts forth that Lisa is the only member of the family who accepts her genius, while the others purposefully quash their brilliance in order to live happy lives. So, like, the rest of the family chooses to be dumb because, you know, the smarter you are, the more miserable you are. But ignorance is bliss. Mm -hmm. So, in that wise, it says that Marge was once an amazing student but left her academic pur pursuits behind to become a homemaker. Correct. In regards to Homer, it was revealed that a crayon lodged in his brain, which, which, which was what was suppressing his intelligence. And that was in, I think it was a season 11 episode called Homer. Mm -hmm. And Homer, instead of keeping that crayon out of his brain, he literally chooses to be dumb but happy rather, th rather than smart and miserable. So he actually reinserts the crayon back into his brain because, when he, once, because once he became intelligent, he realized that he was becoming way more alienating and very very cold towards others correct like he was being basically being very arrogant and that came and that put off a lot of people and so lisa but lisa really liked him the intelligent version of homer but she realized that her father was pushing everyone away so he just so she decided okay well i'm always going to remember you as a smart as this briefly intelligent guy that you are that you were but i but you know this is not really you so here's the crayon so homer shoves it up back in his brain and he becomes a dumbass again <laughs> um uh and then what's and up then, jordan 
Hey, what up? And then finally, in, in another episode, we see Bart, who was once a gifted child, but then his grades began to decline. And this episode blamed it, on, and one of the episodes blamed it on a gene that makes the male Simpson stupid. And but <laughs> the freaking pot, the pot when they put the pots on their heads and then they <laughs> yeah, and they ram each other like freaking rams. <laughs> Um, and then uh, like Lisa starts to be afraid that oh my god, am I going through a process of dumbening? Because Lisa, Lisa Lisa starts to fear that she's becoming stupid, but then yeah. she finds out that only only the males, only the yeah only the women only the women only, only, yeah only the women can turn out smart, but the men come come out stupid out completely stupid yeah yeah I remember so that episode. yeah so it said that the episode blamed it on a gene that makes the male Simpson stupid, but Homer's crayon incident actually disproves that. So it kind of contradicts that whole part right. of, the, of the Simpsons gene. And then instead, Bart saw how happy his dad was in his life, despite his lack of intelligence, and decided to strive for happiness instead of genius. So Bart uses his brains to come up with elaborate pranks instead of schoolwork. So Bart chooses to become an underachiever. He chooses to become you know, basically a slacker and a dumbass in, in class because he sees that ignorance is bliss. And then Lisa, she's the only, she's the most intelligent member of the family. But, you know, that you kind of see how, at times, how frustrated she can be, especially when dealing with Homer and dealing with other people, especially Bart, who can't really meet her on her level. So, that's, I, that, that's a bit intriguing. Yeah, I mean... I mean, that, that kind of, it's, it's intriguing, but it's also depressing at the same time. It, it, because yeah, but... I wouldn't if they were all like that, then yeah. there wouldn't be no show. Yeah, because it's like, would I mean, like, would any reasonable person choose to be unintelligent, choose to be not well read, and and be happy rather than be smart as hell, rather than maybe like intelligent? You're on it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The more things you know, the more miserable you might be. Especially like, for example, if you if you're into if you have to pay attention to politics, yeah, you're miserable as hell. You know, are you trying time. to flip this? Uh, are you trying to flip my logic on me? I, I'm not trying. To, I'm not trying to flip anything on you, man. I mean, I mean, I'm just, I'm just, you know, just spitballing, you know. But, but it, it, it's, it's, just, it's, it's, it's depressing because, like, it, it, it shows that this theory kind of implies that to be truly happy, you, you, you cannot be intelligent. You can't because if you're intelligent, you question things all the time. You ask questions. You always try to go, try to dig beneath the surface level. But if you're happy, then you know you you can the the the, the happier you are, like the more prone you are to like say what to to not read books because oh who got time for reading books and shit. The more prone you are to watching reality TV as as your as your only diet of television and, and media, like the more. <laughs> The more the more ratchet forms of media, Shots fired. the more ratchet forms of media that you're open to, and and then if you come across any movie or TV show that you know tries to you know that that's unconventional, and you know tries to make you ask questions, then you're like, oh man, this shit is whack, man. How come it's not straightforward and all this? And it's like, <laughs> I am. I mean, I um, mean, for once. The super villain has agreed with us. He said, nicely said, Vic. Thank you, John. You uh, missed it earlier, John. He actually agreed with you in something, too. Uh, I already forgot what it was, so you're going to have to listen yeah. back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, that, but, you know, I mean, The Simpsons is a, is a great show. And, 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 and you know, like, uh, let's get... They're in, what, 25 seasons now? Oh, no, they're like 28th or 29th. Are they really? Yeah, they're almost approaching their 30th season. Almost. In a couple of years. But, they can do it too. The Simpsons is still legitimately funny. It is. I still catch an episode. I don't catch it as much as I used to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ma yeah. Oh, yeah. Married with Children. Married yeah. with Children's classic. Yeah. Al Bundy, man. Yo, Katie Seagal, Peggy Bundy. Fine. I was a Christina Applegate guy. Yeah. Yeah, Christina Applegate. She she she's 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 she's, pre she's pretty. She's pretty. But you know, Katie Seagal. She's she's my she's my heart. I told you I almost met her, right? Really? Yeah. When? Um, I was actually a um, cuz I had nothing to I, I literally had nothing to do that day. So I decided to be a um extra in the movie Bleed for this. Mm -hmm. And they shot some scenes at the Civic Center and she was there and I was and she was like taking pictures with people, signing autographs and then like I was 
this like this close, and then she had to leave. Oh man! All right, I was I was so mad. Wow, that was Gemma. Mm. Oh, I mean, Sons, she, of, Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Hmm. Yeah, I I, 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 I gotta get back on the show. Oh, were you on that? Were you in the film Bleed for this? Can we Somewhere see? Somewhere in the crowd. Oh. I haven't seen it. I haven't even seen it yet. Okay, so I'll I'll try to get my hands on like a Blu-ray and kind of like go frame by frame. <laughs> yeah, you would have to. It was it was. I have to look up the fight. I have to look up the fight, but um. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's that's uh, the the Simpsons uh, fan theory. Okay, I, my last one. Is with uh, Titanic. Okay. Let's hear this one. Jack never existed. What? No. <laughs> Jack never existed. I caught this one off a day. I caught it off a of Daily Mail. Mm-hmm. And a Reddit fan theory sa- says that Jack was merely a uh, figment of Rose's imagination. And she had, a cap- she had a psychotic episode while on the ship. And Jack helped her deal with... With the misery of her life. Hmm. That she... Okay, so Rose... Rose hated Cal. Remember, she was forced to... She was being forced to marry him and all that. Yeah. He was very abusive and egotistical and, you know, whatever. He was just not... He's a snobby bastard. Oh, yeah. Yep. So, and she was... She was depressed when she attempted suicide. Mm -hmm. So Jack was a... Jack represented Rose's... Inner strength and his presence allowed her to fly mm-hmm. as she was on the ship's bow. Mm-hmm. And remember that there is no trace of Jack whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Well, like, like his remains, or no? There's no record of. There was no record of him. You've seen the movie. I've seen the. Well, well, he was. He was because he was a stowaway. Yeah. Yeah, he, but they still had. They still had. Um. Like he was mocked in though. But really? Like there, there had to have been some type of record of uh, of him being a passenger on it, but mm. then I, but then again, as I mentioned on the show before, there's a story where I had a, um, I had a relative on the Titanic, my grandfather's aunt, I believe, mm-hmm. and there's really no record of her being it. She was um, a maid for one of the rich families, and she ended up dying on the ship. Mm. But, um, yeah, there's really no records of her, like, being on the ship. We're, ha- we're really having, like, a hard time finding, like, information on her. Oh, wow. But, um, yeah. so, I mean, it could have been possible that he was real. It's just that there was just no record. Because, remember, he was pretty much a hobo just yeah. traveling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean... I I I think I I don't think that that theory quite holds holds up because like because uh, obviously other people did see him like right. like Cal like his 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 mom yeah that's what I, him, that's yeah. what I was guessing too but maybe just the whole thing was just the whole situation itself was just an ima- just a figment of um Rose's imagination yeah but I I. I I don't see the sense in that because, like, given like all that she went through and on the ship, and um, you know her her budding romance with Jack. Exactly, yeah. I mean, so like, if, if it was if it was imagined, do you mean that? Tell me that she was basically finger banging herself in the car. Possibly. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean, basically. And, and, oh, and here's some. And here's something that actually pulls a, pulls a hole in your theory, though. <laughs> Remember, ahead. the drawing the drawing of herself nude nude on the couch is it real. Probably wasn't really her. No, it was her. Come on, if if not her, then who? Her mom's? Probably somebody else. No. Somebody else that they found. The whole thing could have been. I mean, maybe yeah. The drawing was real, so that pokes a hole in your theory right there, because she still has the drawing. No, she no the. She no, no, didn't no. have the drawing. They no, it, thought, they found it in the remains. Yeah, right. It was in the. It was in a safe. Right. It was in a safe. So. Yeah, yeah. It was, I mean, that, that that is that is a good point. Like, I don't know how a piece of paper would survive underneath all that water pressure. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. but the fact remains, it was still there. Yeah, so the picture was still there, but they it, it was her. It said JD, you know, JD. Yep, Jack Dawson. So, um, so Jack, it was just an interesting one that came up. That came up. Oh my. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, Titanic is a it, it's it's a great movie. I still watch it to this day. Oh yeah, Titanic is a modern classic. I mean, it's. No, it's not. No, it's not. Yeah, it's it's not a real love story. It's actually a fictional story. Yeah, yeah um, historical fiction. It's like yeah. a, it's like Forrest Gump on the Titanic. Yeah, um, and 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 also Titanic. Uh, it's it's one of. <laughs> it was. Uh, I mean, yeah, like I said, the, the the theory doesn't. It's interesting, but it doesn't hold water. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, 
And then there was well, no, you can go out and go on to yours. Yeah, um, here's a here's an interesting uh, uh, th- fan theory, an MCU one, um, and this was also from Entertainment Weekly, and this one actually does sound plausible. It says that the uh, the, the fan theory posits that the that the uh, reality stone, the Infinity Stone, the reality stone will be used to recast characters. So, um, so uh, this is uh, this is from uh-huh. yeah. Uh-huh. So this is from Entertainment Weekly. It says, uh, one of the biggest questions of the MCU since the beginning has been, how will it continue? Superheroes can continue to fight indefinitely when they're in print, but live action presents much more of a challenge. Not only will the actors continue to age until they're no longer suited for the roles, but typically actors want to focus on other projects as their careers continue. As much as we might be willing to watch Robert Downey Jr. suit up and fight evil well into his 60s, no, we don't. As an actor, Why not? Nah. As an actor, he We're will... Watching have... Sam- we enjoy watching Samuel Jackson. He's damn near 70. Well, yeah, he's... Actually, the, and the hitman's bodyguard looks real funny, by the way. It does. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to catch that. Yeah. Um, as an actor, uh, Robert Downey will eventually want to leave the role. Yeah, uh, unfortunately. So uh, it says, uh, while there are plenty of heroes in the Marvel Universe, a U.S. agent movie just isn't going to have the same impact as a Captain America movie. Correct. True. Uh, the solution may already be present. In the comics, the reality, gem, the reality Gem has the power to grant its user control over reality. One who possesses a stone can create entirely different realities. So one theory suggests that the reality gem will be used at the end of Avengers 4 as a soft reboot of the universe, recasting longtime actors in the same iconic roles to prolong the life of the MCU. That's actually plausible. That, that is. That uh, is. So that's, I think that's how um, they can use, they can like maybe like recast Iron Man as like, Iron Woman or Riri Williams. Riri Williams and stuff. I'm yeah. a Dez Cho as the Hulk and, you know, the whole rebranding. Um, the Falcon does become Captain America. Mm, okay, yep, that's right. So, uh, it's it's possible. It's po- it is. It is indeed possible. Yeah. And and who knows? Maybe, um, well, this this is, well, actually, it's not going to happen. I was going to say that maybe the MCU can introduce the X-Men, but they're going to have to fight Fox for <laughs> it. <laughs> that's never going to happen. Tyler um, Perry can be the new Nick Fury. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Good one, John. John Aponic. Yo, Tyler Perry as the new Nick Fury. You know, I would actually go to. I would pay good money to see that. <laughs> as as much as I mean, you know, what? here's the thing about Tyler Perry though. Oh, here we go. And and, and no, no. Here's the thing. I mean, I'll, as much as I dislike the Medea character, I actually like Tyler Perry as as a as an as an actor and as a businessman. I think that Tyler Perry. He he does have he does have potential to to stretch out when if as long as he's not writing and directing his own material because he's terrible at those things. But one of I think one of the one of the more interesting projects projects that I heard that he's involved in is that Tyler Perry is gonna be is gonna be portraying uh, Oscar Micheaux, and Oscar Micheaux was actually the first black Hollywood director in the twenties. Mm-hmm. And so I think that I think that would be excellent casting. I think it would be very intriguing. So if Tyler Perry can, you know, take those kind of roles, kind of step out of his Medea lane, which should be shut the fuck down. Um, yes, you will. Medea's got to die sometime. I hope so. Terminal cancer all the way. But um, I but there you, go. you know I. I, 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 w- I would really like to see Tyler Perry take, you know, more different roles that kind of stretch his craft, stretch his acting craft, you know? Yeah, what's the... Well, he's done, like, other movies besides just Medea, like... Yeah, he did Gone Girl. Uh, Alice yeah. Cross, I heard, was... Eh. Yeah. Um, what was it? A Family That Praise was good. Yeah. Yeah. Did, have you seen it? No, I haven't seen no, it. No, you're just already shut down? Yeah. Good <laughs> Good deeds. Um, good deeds. Good Mr. Deeds. deeds was Adam Sandler. Yeah. And, oh, Mr. Adam said that movie's hilarious. Um, he also did Gone Girl. Gone Girl. Yeah. Ben he, Affleck? Yeah, with Ben Affleck. He did that. Yeah. He played the uh, the the sort of shady lawyer type publicist for Ben Affleck's character. Are you spell Oscar Michaud? Uh, Michaud. Uh, M I C H E A U X. M I C H E A U X. Yep. Okay. Yeah. French name. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, a Tyler Perry as Nick as a new Nick Fury, I'd pay good money to see that for <laughs> <God>. sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Now here's a 
hot, oh my god, the most ridiculous one I came across. Okay. You wouldn't even want to believe what it's for. All right, what's up? The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Mm. <laughs> okay, what's 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 the fan theory for it, this? Oh, one? it's so stu- it's so stupid. I can't believe somebody even actually like took this. I like Google image. It was a Google image. Mm-hmm. So, Will actually died in the fu- in the fight on the basketball court in West Philly. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> the taxi driver is actually God, who drives a rare cab. He takes Will to heaven, where he works out all his. He works on all his issues with his wealthy aunt and uncle. Will only sees his mother and father on special occasions because that's when they come to visit his grave. But that, that's a, that, that theory is dumb as fuck, man. I, I can literally post it on the Instagram. Well, you, pop, yeah, you can zoom in on Instagram now. I wow. can literally post it on the social media and show everybody how ridiculous that was. Wow, that that is a ridiculous theory. That I mean, that sounds that sounds just as dumb as uh the Grease fan theory I heard. Have you ever seen the movie Grease? I I watch it when I'm at work because my cause my residents enjoy it. Oh, Gr- Grease. Uh, oh, Gr- oh yeah, Gre- Grease is an awesome. Oh yeah. Okay, all right. Same yeah, right uh, I need to fan her down. Yeah, Grease is an awesome musical if you haven't seen it. Uh, John Travolta, Olivia Newton-John. Um, apparently, um, a big fan, th- a fan theory that I came across, which is so stupid, it's, it, it just beggars belief, is that uh, Olivia Newton-John's character, Sandy, she actually died at the beginning of Grease. So apparently, um, the, the, the fan theory states that um, uh, uh, where towards, towards the end of the movie, well, towards the end of the movie, Grease, uh, John Travolta and uh, uh, Sandy... They kind of fly off in this red convertible, mm-hmm. you know. If they fly off in the sky, so it's kind of like a fantastical ending. Yeah. Apparently, the, the 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 fan theory suggests that the, that the ending is actually a hallucination that she's actually experiencing as her as her brain is deprived of oxygen as she's dying. So so uh-huh. like, so like apparently like um like the like the whole like the whole movie um was like it was like during a song uh, summer nights which is one of the main uh, big uh, da- dance numbers um basically danny danny john, john travolta's character and sandy they, re- they recount how they first met um uh, and they started a whole summer fling and all this and um and the line in the song that reads i saved her life she nearly drowned suggests that sandy actually did drown and the whole movie is just a whole elaborate fantasy you know, which is like a sort of like her hallucination on her way to the afterlife. She's imagining all these dance numbers. It's it's fucking dumb. Oh my god! It's it's dumber than Grease Two, and Grease Two was stupid. <laughs> I wouldn't know. Yeah, Grease is the word, child. I got an, I got another one that's pretty ridiculous for you. All right. Th- I, well, this one is actually well. Once you once I get to the last line, it's. A, pretty much meant to be stupid okay peter pan was an angel that held kids hands when they were on their way to heaven which was neverland mm-hmm. that's why they never grew up all those kids were dead boom childhood ruined what that's that's dark as shit man i mean i mean come on man this is this I remember posting that and angela shout out to angela she was like no 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 I mean, yeah, she got mad at me for that one. I mean, I mean Peter Pan is a, it's a wholesome, it's a wholesome story, man. Come on, I mean, they're yeah, the, I know the kids don't grow up, but you know they just retain their childhood innocence. You know, Rufio, man. Oh, that that was Hook. Still pretty much the same movie. Yeah, still the same story. You know, Hook. You know, Hook gets a Hook gets a fairly bad rap for being kind of whack, but you know what? I just have a soft spot for it. Have you seen it? It was fun. I mean, yeah. I watched it when I was a kid, and I probably like only once or twice. Yeah, it's it's a fine movie. Not as much as the other movies. Yeah, it's. Oh, and I there was one I did it, another another theory. Well, it was set on The Simpsons. I was like, wow. Hmm, what's this? Well, if you date back to the original um the the original comic books, I think it was Harvey Comics that wrote them. Yeah. Casper the Friendly Ghost is actually the ghost of Richie Rich. Really? If you actually look at the com- if you actually look at the comics, they were like drawn literally the same. Hmm. Except that one was a ghost and the other one was human. Well, I mean, I guess maybe back in those days, you know, that everybody kind of drew everybody like the same. Yeah, kind of like artistic shorthand because they yeah. have to mass produce so many. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't see why that would be the case, but okay. <laughs> All right, there it is. 
So any other uh, fan theories? Nah, that... I said, no, that's, that, that's it. I only came up with those three good ones and mm. a couple of uh, ridiculous ones. Yeah, so, you know, this was actually a pretty fun topic. I told you, you fucking closed-minded assholes. What you, yo, yo, what the, who the I fuck? I assholes. Yeah. So that includes Maurice and Aris as well. Well, shit, man. You, you, lump me into, you lump me with that bunch? Listen, I am, I am, I am open-minded as they come. You know what? The read black privilege, black, oppo- black privilege opportunity comes with those who create it. Nah, I'm good. See? But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, but yeah. Oh, but n- your point hasn't been proven. But anyway, um, uh, what, are, what are some of your uh, ridiculous fan theories that you've come across? Uh, or whatever, even good ones. Or even good ones, yeah. Something, that's not, that's something that sounds legit and plausible. You know, whatever it is, email the show at codexprimepodcast at gmail.com. And, uh, you know, let us know what you think. All right. On to question of the week. All right. Let's hear it. Okay. So last week's, what is your favorite TV theme song? Mm-hmm. Uh, so we got a very few on our Facebook. Uh, Linda McDonald says the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> Jason Salinger says in search of hosted by Leonard Nimoy, also Doctor Who circa 1977. Mm, some vintage ones. And Eddie Ortiz as a kid, Power Rangers. Oh, of course. Of course. All right. Any other All ones? Right. Well, no, that's it for last week. So this week, uh, mm-hmm. what mo- What was a movie that made you fall asleep in the theater? Damn. Fall asleep in the theater. Well, okay. Um, it didn't make... I, I nodded off because this... this I didn't fall asleep uh, full on, but this movie was so fucking boring, so frustrating, so irksome that... It's it, going to be a movie that everybody likes. No, nah, it's thankfully it's not. It's a movie that it, it turned into a two it turned into a 2 hour and 30 minute struggle to stay awake. It was Paul Thomas Anderson's film The Master. Oh, okay, I never heard of it. Yeah, starring uh, Joaquin Phoenix and the late Philip Seymour Hoffman and Amy Adams. This I listen, I I oh. I, I love Paul Thomas Anderson as a director. Like there there will be blood with Daniel Day Lewis is an absolute masterpiece. Uh Boogie Nights, Magnolia, Punch Drunk Love, Adam Sandler's mm-hmm. best film. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. Um and also his first film, uh, Heart Eight, Paul Thomas Anderson's debut. The Master was boring as fuck. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You th- this movie this movie was supposed to be like a, a like a whole inspired by like Scientology, <laughs> like Paul like like uh, Joaquin Phoenix plays this guy who huffs paint thinner and he chronically masturbates and then he runs into um, Philip Seymour Hoffman's character who's like this cult leader who's, who's, who's like a, supposedly like this quasi um, uh, uh, riff of L. Ron Hubbard who was the founder of Scientology and their whole, and their whole religion is called The Cause and the whole movie is like, like it has a really interesting premise of like just how deep will Joaquin Phoenix's character fall into the cause but the whole movie how it unfolds man it, it unfolds in such an in such a in such a shitty obtuse manner that it, it's a film that is, is is so in love with itself it's so in love with itself that it doesn't it, it doesn't bother to, bother to be coherent it doesn't bother to make any fucking sense there's a, there's there's one goddamn scene in the goddamn movie where all these there all these fat fat you know, old men and women are dancing naked, butt ass naked, to some to some old forties or fifties record. Tell them why you mad, Vic. And and then and then you have scenes where Joaquin Phoenix is be- beating off on the beach, <laughs> huffing paint thinner, and then sounds like a good time. It's it's and then and then you have one scene where Amy Adams is beating off Philip Seymour Hoffman in the bathroom. That's a good, that's a hell of a time. This movie's this this the, 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 you know what fuck the master. <laughs> The, the the master is such a fucking come down from there will be blood and you know what I and and you know what I, I from what I hear his his Paul Thomas Anderson's film after that incoherent incoherent vice or rather inherent vice isn't much better so I'm hoping and I and 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 I am even praying I'm not a religious man but I'm even praying you're doing that a lot lately that I know I'm just gonna figure of speech I'm hoping and wishing that Paul Thomas Anderson's next film which comes out this year, Phantom Thread, which is Daniel Day-Lewis's final feature, I hope that it's a ret- that it's going to be a return to form of the Paul Thomas Anderson that I know and like because his last two films or, or rather his last film that I've seen The Master is fucking trash, man. Fucking boring as shit. I almost fell asleep in the theater. And you know what? 
when once it, once that movie ended, there was an elder, elderly couple sitting in front of me, and um and the, the husband turned to his wife, said, "Hey, what did you think of the film?" When the, once the credits rolled, and the and the old woman was like, "Well, that movie fucking sucked." I love it when old folks cuss. Yeah, and I was like, "You said it, sister." And then, like, when I walked outside the the the, the, the auditorium, I saw the, the the husband. He was standing in front of the bathroom. I guess he was waiting on his wife. He looked at me, and I looked at him, and we exchanged a look. He was like. He was like, what the hell was that shit? And I'm like, <laughs> you said it. You said it, sir. I, I wish I had the answers. So, yeah, The Master. Fuck that movie. Okay. Well, mine's uh, Ben Affleck's Daredevil. Mm. Really? It bored you that much? Oh, yeah. Yes. Luckily, I was working at a movie theater at the time. Mm-hmm. So I got to see it for free. Okay, yeah, good for you. <laughs> And uh, y'all gonna be y'all about to be mad at me for this one. Okay. Find a Nemo. Go get the. F- okay, Jen said Deadpool. She fell asleep on Deadpool. <laughs> you didn't say that. I, I said Find a Nemo. Tell me you did not just say that. I did. You fell asleep on motherfucking I fell, Finding Nemo. I fell asleep on Finding Nemo. Yo, get the fuck out of here. Listen, <laughs> Finding Nemo is a Pixar masterpiece. It is a classic. That film yeah, I that film is so I good. I don't hate the movie. I just fell asleep on it when I went to go see it. Well, when I watched it. Okay, so... Wait, no, I didn't see that one in the theater, so I, that didn't count. Okay, but so... I did, but whenever I, do, whenever I did watch it with like my little cousins or whatever, I would fall asleep on it. Okay, so you fell asleep because it was, you were... na- it was a nap time movie. It's not a nap time movie. It's but a legitimate. Then, it's a legit. Put it on just so we can. Yo, you, you, yo, you, yo, you need to sit your ass down and watch Finding Nemo because that movie did. is the shit. I eventually did. You watched the whole movie. Yes. What did you think of the movie? It was nice. Okay, good. Because I'm about to say because if you said if you sit here talking about oh I fell asleep on Finding Nemo because I was so bored by it. Oh, no, I wasn't that talking. Bored, but I'm just saying. I remember falling asleep on Finding Nemo. Oh, talking fish. Who does that? Let me tell you something right now, man. It would, it would, it would, I grew up loving the Ninja Turtles. Do you think I would be pissed off with talking fish? Yo, listen, man. Yo, I, I would. Yo, it would have been a problem up in here, yo, son. No, it wouldn't. Real talk, man. Yo, you, you, you cannot dump on Finding Nemo, son. And Finding Dory, yo, that's what's up too. But Finding Nemo was a better film. Yeah, but you cried. I didn't cry at Finding you Dory. You said you cried at Finding Dory. I teared up a little bit. I teared up just a little bit. Was I couldn't help it. Yo, was. there was a whole row of he dudes. Push ups. There was a whole row of dudes behind me watching Finding Nemo. They were tearing up too. So yo, that movie hits you in the feels. Sure. I ain't soft, man. And it, well. Well, our question of the week will be on our, Insta- in our on our Instagram and the rest of our social media, so you can hit us up and let us know. Let us know what movie did you go? Did you fall asleep at the movie theater? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So uh, let us know. Let us know how how wrong Carl is at Codex Prime Podcast <laughs> at gmail dot com. Uh, where they can where can the good people find us? Everywhere. Everywhere. That's uh, <laughs> SoundCloud, iTunes. YouTube, YouTube, Google Play, yes. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Actually, Victor's gonna be twi- He's gonna be on Twitter like a motherfucker this weekend. Yes, uh, this weekend is SummerSlam weekend. So next Tuesday, we're gonna be talking about breaking down SummerSlam and NXT Takeover Brooklyn Three. So I'm gonna be live tweeting both shows. And uh, next week, we're gonna be talking about uh, SummerSlam and NXT. Get some wrestling talking. Breaking that down. Yeah, man. So uh, yeah, so be sure to join us on join me on the uh, on the live Twitter streams thingy, and catch me on the uh, damn. I already forgot the name of the <laughs> on the Grio app where right. I'll be having some discussions about I don't know whatever comes to, whatever comes to mind. I'll probably do that like at least once once or twice a week. Whatever pops up, and I would like to hear what y'all think. So download the Grio app, iPhone users. Yeah, iPhone users, because y'all think y'all better than us. No, you're not. But anyway, I uh, got that app first. Yeah, whatever. But uh, you guys had Jay Z's Magna Carta first. We did. Yeah. For Android. Yeah. Uh, Samsung users. Oh wow. Okay. Well. All right. Yeah. Well, I guess tit for tat. But uh. But yeah. Um. That's about it. Uh. Thank you for tuning in on Facebook Live and uh, SoundCloud. If you're listening to us later, we will catch you on the flip next week. Peace out, nerds. Later.